All right, guys, this is just a, a, a vlog today, one of these quick and dirty boomer vlogs that I'm going to do on my cell phone. Uh, I'm not going to do a proper video today because I just haven't had time to do, you know, one of my usual videos that I actually set up cameras and lights and, and do proper video editing and things like that. You're not getting that today because the last three days from the time I wake up in the morning to the time I go to bed in the last three days, all I have done is worked on DTOS, my uh, X monad post installation script so you ins install arch linux or any arch based distribution and then you can run my dtos script and get my xmonad desktop with doom emacs and the alacrity terminal and the fish shell and all of that and it's been a fun experience but it's been a ton of work because obviously there's bugs people are reporting bugs and i've been trying to fix them and uh, adding new things to the script as well although i haven't really pushed a whole lot of new uh, features to the script yet because what's already in the script there's enough bugs already in the script i want to fix the bugs before i start adding new stuff you know creating more bugs but uh what i wanted to do uh since i've only done dtos in the last three days and i'm kind of wore out and tired i'm on my third cup of coffee here what i'm gonna do i'm shutting it down for the day i'm gonna go home and relax uh, may not do anything tomorrow, may take tomorrow off, we'll see. Uh, I feel like I need to recuperate a little bit, but I'm glad we finally got an initial release of DTOS completed. But this this vlog today, what I wanted to talk to you guys is about support requests. You know, if you have a bug of any kind, not about DTOS, but any kind of software or project, and you have an issue, and you want to raise that issue, what's the proper way to file a bug or open an issue? And where should you file that bug or, or issue? And, you know, how should you talk to the developers of that project? Things like this. This is actually a video I've wanted to make for a while, way before DTOS. But I've talked a little bit about some of this stuff before. Um, I know I've done some Hey DT videos where I've uh, mentioned the proper venues to open support requests. But I wanted to revisit this again because... Now that I've done the DTOS script, you know, I'm getting a ton of these support requests. Uh, people are filing bugs, opening issues, and all kinds of places. Obviously, the most appropriate place to do this would be on my GitLab, the DTOS repository on GitLab. File an issue, just open an issue, tell me what your problem is, make sure you include relevant information. One of the biggest problems, especially to people that are not used to filing bug reports, is typically people don't give you any information other than, I'm having a problem. And that's it. <laughs> hey, I, I tried to uh, use your script. It ain't working. No other information, right? I, probably half of the people that have opened issues, not on GitLab, but even on YouTube and Reddit and email, Mastodon direct messages, I've gotten support requests about DTOS and all of those venues. Uh, more than half of them, they never tell me what operating system they're running as far as what Linux distribution they were actually trying to install the thing on. So number one, right? tell me a little information. What Linux distribution, what version of that distribution were you trying to install DTOS on? You know, tell me the error message. If you got an error message in the terminal, copy it and actually put that in your bug report because there's so much time wasted when you file a bug report and you give the developer no information, then his very first question is going to be, you're going to have to tell me some information, right? So he wasted his time having to tell you that you, and your time is wasted because now you have to post a second time to actually post the correct information that was needed to be in that first post anyway. You know, just, just think before you file a bug report, give all the information that you can. If it was a problem and you tried to solve the problem, let the developer no, hey, I got this bug. I thought this would solve it. I tried this. This didn't work. And the reason you want to tell him that is because so he doesn't tell you to go try that solution that you've already tried, right? Again, don't waste his time and also don't waste your own time. So give people as much information in a bug report as you can. If their project has any kind of uh, read me or anything and it actually tells you exactly what they expect to be in a bug report read that and try to give them all of that information um, again it just takes a few seconds 
to read a little bit, maybe read some of the other issues people have opened on that GitHub or that GitLab or, or wherever it is you're filing this bug report, Bugzilla, you know, wherever people file bugs these days. Yeah, see what other people are putting in their bug reports. You know, if they're giving a lot of detailed information, that, that will give you some clue as to what you need to put in your bug report. Another thing to consider is, are you actually filing your bug report in the correct forum? For example, uh, I see a lot of people that, you know, let's take our Linux-based distributions, right? Our, our Linux operating systems. I have some bug. You know, I'm running, we'll, we'll just say Arch Linux with the GNOME desktop environment. And you know what? I have this bug that happens every time I open the GNOME Nautilus file manager or whatever, and I'm not sure what the problem is. I'm going to go to the Arch forums and uh, open an issue there. And, you know, it'll be all about problems I have in GNOME, but do the Arch devs have anything to do with GNOME as a project or the Nautilus file manager, which is GNOME's file manager? I mean, if unless you're sure that that bug has anything to do with the underlying Linux distribution, in this case, Arch, then going to the Arch forums to, to post about that may not be the best place. You know, there's GNOME support channels, right? IRC channels and probably mailing lists and support forms and, and things like that. That's probably where I would start first. Now, if they, you know, look at your issue and then tell you, hey, this really isn't our problem. It's an issue with the underlying distribution, in this case, Arch Linux, and then go to the Arch forums. But a lot of times, a lot of times people don't think, you know, they just figure I can open this issue in anybody's support form and they'll help me with that issue. And a lot of people, a lot of devs, for one thing, they don't have a lot of time. So if you open an issue and they immediately know this issue has nothing to do with my software or my project, it's really somebody else's problem, typically they're going to immediately tell you, I'm not going to help you. You need to go file this bug with these people. They may even be rude about it. And I don't want that to happen to you. I'm not this way. You know, I've gotten a lot of newbie kind of questions here in the last couple of days about DTOS, but I, I understand that. I mean, I'm I'm a YouTube video content creator, and I'm trying to convert a lot of people, a lot of new to Linux users over to Linux, so I expect a lot of noob questions, and I really, you open anything on my GitLab, it may have nothing to do with the DTOS script, and I've actually gotten several of those in the last few days, questions that have absolutely nothing to do with my script. I've gotten several people that have opened issues about DTOS and the issue, underlying issue that's really causing them the problem is they didn't know how to install Arch Linux correctly. It has nothing to do with my script. I've had uh, several people that didn't know how to set up virtual machines correctly and they assumed the DTOS script after they ran it was causing issues in their virtual machine, graphics drivers problems in the virtual machine. It's just they didn't set up virtual box correctly or whatever it was they were using. You know, it's, again, not an issue with DTOS, but I'm a nice guy. I help them with their problems because if I know the answer, I'm going to help you with your problem anyway. But a lot of people are not like this on the internet. A lot of developers will just tell you, go away. And they may be rude about it. And I know that's a bad experience and it's going to really put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths because, hey, maybe that was your very first bug report you ever filed. And then somebody was mean to you. You may never file a bug report again. <laughs> and I don't want that to happen to you. And the best way for this not to happen to you is to actually think for a couple of minutes before you file that bug report. Did I give them the information they needed, all the, all the relevant information, everything I can think of? And is this the proper place to actually post this bug report? If, it, if you think it might not be, then again, think before you, you open that issue. One other thing I want to talk about is not just you guys opening issues in a wrong form as, as far as, hey, this isn't my problem. This is uh, the, another project's problem. You should go open this issue there. I'm talking about some people open issues on completely inappropriate places. For example, YouTube. Now, I posted a video yesterday about DTOS, the launch of DTOS, and I know immediately people are trying the script. Some of these people are getting errors, and they're going to report those errors in the comment thread on YouTube. I know that, and that's cool. I'm not going to tell them to go to GitLab to open an issue. I'm gonna, I, I spent all day yesterday monitoring the comments for that video and responding to all the support requests, uh, and I did the same thing today as well. But here's the thing. I'm not going to do that tomorrow. I'm not going to do that next week, right? At some point, I'm not going to go back to these old videos. 
and monitor comments for support kinds of questions. There, there's no way. YouTube sucks as far as a support channel. You can't properly support people on YouTube because YouTube is not a bulletin board system or a web form. It's more like a social media site. It's not designed for, for that kind of task. So yes, you guys that asked questions the last couple of days, you guys got answers to your support questions. You're probably not going to get it on that video going forward because again, YouTube, I, I can't support people through YouTube comments. That's, that's not it's just not the right venue because one of the things about YouTube as a content creator, when I upload, almost all of the views that that video is going to get are within the first 24 hours. After that, nobody else is watching that video. That's not entirely true, but the views go drastically down after that. Meaning, if you opened a support request on that video today that I posted yesterday, very few people are watching that video today. If you'd have done it yesterday, you had a much better, a much larger audience that have a chance to actually read your comment and maybe give you an answer today, not so much. And the truth is, most of the people that watch a video don't read the comments. And the very few people that do watch a video and read the comments, most of those people don't post comments. <laughs> you know, most people watch YouTube to watch videos. They don't uh, go to YouTube to chat. You know, that, that's not what most people do. It's just a bad form as far as a support form. That's not, don't post any kind of support questions on YouTube. Again, as a video content creator, I know uh, uh, that not everybody knows this. Some people just ha have never been told this. And that's why I'm telling you guys today on video, it, it's just a bad place to ask any kind of support question. And one final thing I, I want to mention is wherever it is you open a, a bug or file an issue, GitHub, GitLab, uh, anybody's forms, it doesn't matter. Make sure that when your issue has been resolved, mark that issue as having been resolved. Maybe do one final post in that thread, letting people know your issue was fixed and exactly what you did to fix it. So many issues get opened and they never get resolved or they get resolved. You fixed your problem, but you know that issue that I filed on GitHub or GitLab, I never go back and tell people how I fixed the problem. So it just stays open, which means down the road, somebody else is going to have that exact same problem. They're going to do a Google search. They're going to find your thread on this uh, bug reporting site. And they're like, well, I wonder if he fixed his problem. If he fixed his problem, what did he do to fix his problem? Well, you did nothing to help them because you didn't go back and actually report that. If you take the time to file a bug report, please see it all the way through and because most people that file a bug report, they get their bugs resolved rather quickly and make sure you let everyone know exactly what you did to fix that problem again. It's just paying it forward. It's going to help the next guy. Anyway, that's all for today, guys. Peace.